Parachutes are great. They are the reason that skydivers don't go splat. And they can be an absolute lifesaver on the rare occasion of a plane disaster. But like most things in life though, sometimes things go wrong and people's parachutes aren't there to save them. But amazingly, some people still survive. My name is Danny Burke and this is the top 10 people who survived parachute fails. Starting off at number 10 now, we have Julianne Diller. This is honestly one of the most crazy things I have ever heard of in my life. Julianne is a German biologist. Now when she was a teenager, she was on board Lancer Flight 508 in Peru. The plane was struck by lightning during a severe thunderstorm and broke up in mid-air before disintegrating at 10,000 feet. Everyone on board eventually died, including Julianne's mother, but she did not. She remained strapped in her seat and fell all the way down into the Amazon jungle below. Amazingly, she survived, probably because her seat and the trees cushioned the blow. She tried looking for her mother, but failed. Julianne then spent 10 days traveling down a river in the Amazon until she was eventually rescued by some loggers. Her story has been the focus of many documentaries over the years. Julianne herself has said the question of why she was the only survivor will always haunt her. Next up at number 9 now we have Michael Holmes. In 2006 this skydiver from New Zealand was very experienced having 7,000 jumps under his belt. Then one day in December of that year something went horribly wrong. He jumped out with his fellow divers at 15,000 feet. He took pictures all the way down to 2,000 feet but when he tried to open his parachute he just started spinning. He tried to open his reserve parachute after that, but the spinning just continued. He was experienced and he knew at this point that he was probably going to die. He made peace with the world and everything went dark, in his own words. Michael then woke up in a blackberry bush, no more than a meter high. He had shattered his foot, his leg, his left hip and his shoulder. It's thought that the bush and the angle that he landed at and that his body was relaxed were all factors in his unlikely survival. Alright, next up at number 8 now, we have Vesta. Velovic. She was a Serbian flight attendant who holds the Guinness World Record for surviving the highest fall without a parachute. On the 26th of January 1972, the plane she was on exploded due to a briefcase bomb. Authorities never actually pinned down who was to blame. Vesna fell without a parachute for a mind blowing 33,330 feet. That's over 4,000 feet higher than Mount Everest. Amazingly, the piece of the aircraft that she was in hit a heavily wooded and snow covered area which cushioned the impact. It's also thought her low blood pressure kept her heart from bursting on impact. Very grisly stuff. Vesna died in 2016 and those close to her said that she always suffered from survivor's guilt. Alright next up at number 7 now we have Nicholas Alchemade. He was a British aircraft gunner during World War 2. On March 24th 1944 his Lancaster bomber was shot down on its way back from a bombing raid. As the plane caught fire and spiralled out of control, Nicholas realised his parachute was on fire. His only option was to just jump without it at 18,000 feet. His fall was broken by pine trees and soft snow and he survived with only a sprained leg. That was it. The rest of the crew crashed and died. When he was captured by the Nazis they didn't even believe the story he told them. But also, why would you make that up? Seems a bit weird. They eventually believed him though and Nicholas was held as a prisoner of war until the end of the war. Alright moving on to number 6 now we have James Bull. He's a British athlete skydiver who has completed over 2,500 jumps, sometimes doing 5 in a single week. In 2009 he was filming a TV documentary in Russia. He had to skydive next to a volcano to film the shot that they wanted. During the dive James was so focused on filming the shot that he realised he had actually gone past his point to release his parachute safely. He knew this because he could actually make out the texture of the snow below him. It was way, way too late. He pulled his parachute anyway when he was just 20 meters above the ground. It swung his legs up in the air but his back just slammed right onto the ground. He broke his back and was bleeding internally when the rescue crew found him. Luckily the brake was stable and he suffered no neural damage which meant that he was able to walk again within a single week. And the craziest part for me is that the accident didn't even stop him from jumping again. Alright moving on to number 5 now we have Ivan Chisov. This Russian pilot was forced to bail out of his plane during an air battle. At 23,000 feet he jumped out with his parachute but did not deploy it. He was worried that the big parachute would make him an easy target for a German pilot. He wanted to get below the battle and then open it. However, due to the thin atmosphere he lost consciousness and couldn't pull the cord. He slammed into the snow at a blistering 130 miles per hour and then rolled down the hill. The Russian army were amazed to find him seriously hurt but very much still alive. He remained 
in critical condition, but was flying again just three months later. All right, guys, next up at the number four spot now, we have Joe Herman. This was an Australian Air Force pilot whose bomber was shot down in 1944 over West Germany. Herman ordered his whole crew to bail out, but before he could grab his parachute, the plane exploded and he was just thrown into the air. As he fell, certain of his death, he collided with another member of the crew. He grabbed onto the left leg of the man as he opened his parachute. Luckily, the parachute opened slowly, which helped Joe keep his grip on the leg. The two men landed safely with only some minor injuries between them. I think that has to be a real bonding session for them. All right, next up at number three now, we have Dave Hodgman. This is a really interesting one because there are real pictures of the event. In March 1985 in Australia, Dave Hodgman jumped out of a plane at 12,000 feet as part of a stunt group attempting a formation. On his way down, he opened his parachute at around 2,500 feet and did not realize he was right below another jumper who also didn't know that he was there. They collided in midair and their parachutes became tangled. People watched below in horror as they just spun and spun around. Dave's parachute was completely collapsed and they were both relying on the other parachute for their survival. They hit the ground hard but both escaped with minor injuries. All right, next up at the number two spot now, we have Alan McGee. This is an American man who was another World War II pilot. His plane was shot down by the Nazis over France in 1942. His parachute was damaged in the attack and so he jumped from the plane without one at an astonishing 22,000 feet. He quickly lost consciousness due to the altitude. Then he crashed through the glass roof of the train station in the French town of Saint Nazaire. Amazingly, the glass absorbed a lot of the force of the impact and Alan survived. He was taken as a prisoner of war and treated for his many injuries but made it back to America when the town was liberated in 1945. And finally at number one now, we have Shana Richardson. This one has an insane twist at the end. In 2005, this woman from Missouri was on her 10th dive with a brand new parachute when something went seriously wrong. At about 3,000 feet in the air, her parachute failed to deploy properly. She accepted that she was going to die and slammed into the ground at 50 miles per hour. Amazingly, she survived. Her instructor rushed her to hospital where she needed four operations. Now, during her time there, scans revealed something else. Shayna had been pregnant for two weeks before that dive. The baby went on to have a healthy birth despite the impact in the early pregnancy. That kid is probably a teenager by now. I wonder how often they tell that story. Well, guys, some people say flying is unnatural, that we shouldn't be thousands of feet up in the air. I think it's fine as long as you're in a good plane or you have a good parachute. What do you guys think of these stories? Thank you, as always, for watching. My name is Danny Burke, and I'll see you all in the next video. <laughs>